In this lesson, I'm going to show you some more of the InfoSemantics slider component widget, specifically the attached item section. Now this section is very simple, but also very useful. So if you haven't seen any of the tutorials on the slider component widget already, by all means have a look at them first. But for this lesson, we're not going to look at the basics of the slider widget, we're going to just look at this attached item section. So on slide, I already have an example slider that we set up in a previous tutorial. And we can see that it's already working, I can move it back and forth. But I already have this caption here, which is reading out the current position of the slider. Now wouldn't it be cool if I could have that caption follow along with the handle so it looked like these two objects were essentially attached? Well, surprise, surprise, this is what attached items allows you to do. Let's set this up. I'll close down the preview. And then I'm going to select this caption to have a look at what its item name is. Okay, it is called variable readout. Let's copy that name and then open up the slider components settings. Under the optional settings section, I have an attached item section, I'm going to turn that on. And as you can see underneath there, we only have a single text entry field. That's where we can put the name of any objects we want to uh, work as attached items. So I'm going to paste in the variable readout name there and click OK. What this has done is it has now linked this caption with this handle object. So whenever I move the handle, the widget is going to make sure that this caption is going to keep in sync with the handles position. Let's have a look at what that looks like in the final output. Now when I move my handle, we can see that the variable readout there is moving along in tandem with the handle. And it doesn't matter where I move the handle, that caption is going to keep in the same position. So that is a nice, cute little example. But how would this work for a real world situation? Well, let's have a look at this other project I have set up here. You may recall in a previous lesson, we set up an interaction where we had a screen capture of Outlook, and we had a working scroll bar moving a list of emails up and down. Well, I've set up a similar interaction over here where I have my IMSO semantics website set up to do the same. Let's just have a look at that. So as you can see, I can grab the scroll bar handle over here and move my website's image up and down here. I can also use the mouse wheel to scroll it. And I've got the buttons here to move the handle up and down. If you want to learn about how to set up this interaction, then please check out one of our previous tutorials that went into that. So up the top here, you can see I've got some rollover areas here acting as links. Maybe in the future, I could set up an event handler to attach to one of these rollover areas so that when I click on one of them, it's going to take me to another slide, which will have another interaction of like this on it. But for now, I just want to get this little problem that I've got out of the way. What's my problem? Well, as you can see here, I can roll over these objects fine and dandy, and it's not a problem. But say I scroll down just a little bit. And you can see when I roll over these links, they seem to have moved. Well, in actual fact, they haven't. And that's the problem. These links have not moved at all. If I move my mouse down a little bit, you can see all of a sudden I'm rolling down the links over here. And that's because that's where they are originally positioned. But if I scroll up, you can see, you know, they, they are in line. But if I scroll down, they're no longer in line with the image. Well, attached items are going to be really useful in this instance here. So let's close the preview. And I'm going to have a look at one of my links here, I'm going to select this object. So the rollover image has got a name of rollover underscore image underscore one. So I'll copy that name. And a rollover area is made up of two objects, a rollover image and a rollover area. So I'm going to select uh, the rollover area in the timeline to see that it has an instance name of rollover underscore area underscore one. So I'm going to open up my widget settings. And under the attached item section, I'm going to paste in the name of the rollover image, put in a comma and then type in the name of the roll over underscore area underscore one. So now both these items have been attached to this giant handle 
which is the image of the InfoSemantics website here. So now when I test the movie and scroll down slightly, and then go and try and roll over the Adobe Captivate widget section, we can see these objects have successfully been attached. So now what I've got to do is go and have a look at all my other links here, get their item names and put those into the attached items field. And that's going to be fairly labor intensive, especially when you consider at a future date, I may want to insert a click box over the top of one of these articles and have that go to another page. And I'm going to have to remember those item names and it's going to be this huge list of items inside that one tiny attached items field. Well, yes, you could do that, but there is an easier way and it is called at syntax. Now you may already be familiar with this feature from a number of our other widgets, but if you're not, let me just explain it to you. I'm going to close this down and I'm going to go back into my widgets settings and I'm going to get rid of rollover image and rollover area. And instead I'm going to type this in at underscore attached. Now, if I clicked okay, now, what the widget is going to do is it's going to go through the slide, find any object that has a underscore attached at the end of its item name, and it's going to treat those objects as if they were attached items. So this could encompass five, 10, 100 objects with this underscore attached suffix at the end of their names and automatically attach those to the the page handle over here. So that's going to make things much easier. In fact, I'm going to make it even easier for me and just make this at underscore a. So I'll click OK. Then select my uh, rollover image here and put on the end of it underscore a. Then I'll go back into my timeline here, select the rollover area and put in underscore a at the end of its name. And then I'll test the movie. Now when I scroll the image down, you can see those objects have automatically attached. And what's more, ahead of time, I've already gone and given all the roll other rollover areas and rollover images a suffix of underscore a and their item name. So when I roll over them, they've automatically attached as well. So now whenever I add a new object to the slide that I want to work as an attached item, all I need to do is put un underscore a at the end of its name and I don't even have to reopen the widget settings it's automatically going to attach. Now there is one thing that we do need to be wary of when talking about attached items. What is that? Well, if I scroll down here and over to the right, I've got a little login section here and I have an interaction where I've got this username text entry box and a password text entry box and a login click area button. What happens is when I click on this login uh, click box, it's going to run an advanced action that checks to see whether I've put in the correct username and password into these text entry boxes. And if so, it's going to show a caption that says login correct. If I've got it incorrect, then it's going to show a caption that says login incorrect. Now, all these objects that are involved in this interaction already have underscore a at the end of their item names. So they should automatically attach to this uh, image, correct? Well, it's not quite as simple as that. Let's test the movie. When I scroll down to that area and I try to click inside those username and password sections, you can see the text entry boxes just aren't there. What has gone wrong? Well, it's pretty simple actually. I'm going to go uh, back to my slide and I'm going to select my uh, page handle object, which is the giant website image, and I'm going to hide it in the timeline. Now we can see what the problem is. Okay, up the top here, this is my slide. You can see my white slide background, but down here, this is way outside of the slide. Now you may or may not know this, but before Captivate goes and publishes the movie, it goes and checks each slide to see whether the objects that it's publishing are actually placed on top of the slide. If they're not, then it's not going to publish those objects because it reckons those objects are never going to appear in the movie and just going to weigh it down. And in most cases, it is correct. This is not one of those cases. So how can we stop Captivate from excluding these attached items from export? Well, there is one check that it does before it excludes them completely. And that's to see whether if it has, these objects have an effect on them. So I'm going to add an effect, go to the motion path, left, right, ease, 
And what Captivate is going to be specifically looking for is if these objects have an effect that is going to bring it onto the stage at any time in the future. So let's just scroll up here and we can see that this object is now going to be moved onto the slide using this effect. And I'm going to go and do that for the rest of these objects in the interaction. So due to the magic of post-production, I've gone and instantly given each of those objects an effect that will move them onto the stage. So let's test this again. I'll scroll down to where the username and password text entry boxes are. And I'm going to put in my username, username and my password, password. Note to anyone listening, this is not my actual username and password, funnily enough. Then I'm going to click on the login button and we can see I've got a login correct. And if I change my password, login incorrect. So that has worked pretty well. The only little niggly issue I have is if I republish my movie and then don't move the uh, handle, you can see that these objects have actually animated onto the slide as they are supposed to. However, when I scroll down, they are moved back to the positions we expect them to be in. So you're just going to have to be wary of that. Make sure that they don't appear too prominently on screen. Maybe just a single pixel appears on screen and uh, or they appear underneath an object that's going to hide them. But other than that, you can make sure that these attached items are going to um, always be included in your movie. So with that information at your disposal, you should now be able to use attached items in any of the interactions you have planned.